brilliant creations, we believe that education is the key to unlocking a child's I think very technical yung isa and then we have a lot of uh, theoretical naman how to teach um, during this online for our online ano, no, classes and during quarantine and today it's gonna be a, uh, an interesting session because we have with us uh, an, an improv artist to help us you know be on our toes when it comes to teaching our classes Okay, I think we're ready to begin. So let me again reiterate the house rules. So everyone's going to be on mute so that we don't interrupt our speaker. But we encourage everyone to, to post your questions on the chat and by the chat function on Zoom. Um, I was also advised, I think maybe you should uh, also prepare to write something. We have an activity later on. So just um, just be ready to for an activity, and then if you have um, colleagues who who may not be here, who may not be able to make it here, we are also streaming this in Facebook, and it will also be recorded. We will also put this up on YouTube and be available on our website at brilliantcreationspublishing.com, and we will have a break in the middle of the session as well okay so our speaker for today is jay villanueva he's a theater director an award-winning theater director although he doesn't want me to say that an improviser he has um, a couple of improv groups in the philippines and a textbook author of brilliant creations he's also a science teacher at the La Salle Green Hills High School. And so without further ado, I'm going to turn over the presentation to, to Jay. Let's see. Yes. Jay? Hello, good afternoon. Naka Hello? mute sila. <laughs> Everyone's on mute. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I was greeting you. Good afternoon, Alan. Oh, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Alan, good afternoon. And good afternoon, good, afternoon. To, good afternoon to everyone who is actually joining us uh, on the on the internet. Uh, throughout these trying times, so um, I would like to invite uh, invite everyone for a uh, a moment of silence uh, to remember everyone that is in this uh, pandemic, whether we are frontliners or not. So let's just uh, bow our heads for a while and just breathe in and breathe out in a moment of silence dedicated to everyone who is fighting for us and fighting with us. So once again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Jay, and I'll be your facilitator for today. I will be uh, speaking of a topic or speaking about a topic that's very close to my heart, and that is uh, creative nonfiction. Um, I'll share with you uh, what this is, and throughout the entire uh, exercise or to, throughout the entire webinar, if you have questions, please do not hesitate to uh, chat me up privately or uh, to everyone also on the group chat. Um, please do expect uh, some delay as the chats come in very slowly. So that's a problem. And uh, please uh, do not forget to mute your either your videos or your uh, your audio. Uh, audio, I think, is, uh, is uh, automatically muted. Okay. So let me share my screen. Uh, at this moment, I will try to share my screen. Uh, Alan? Yes, sir. Yes, can I share my screen now? Yes, go okay. ahead. 
uh, huh? it says it can. Uh, so while waiting can. for yeah, so while waiting for Alan's permission for me to share my screen, uh, let me tell you something about myself. Yes, uh, it's true that I'm a textbook author and I'm a high school teacher. I'll tell you more uh, later when my screen comes on. Okay, but uh, when we talk about these uh, these things, uh, just ano lang muna. Uh, through our chat, um, let me have a suggestion. Let's say, for example, I will ask you to write about something. Uh, what would be the things that you would like to write about? Sige po. Sagot po tayo dun sa ating, uh, uh, sa ating chat. What are the things that you would... If I ask you to write about something right now, what would be the things that you would write about? So, try to... Uh, Play with Zoom, and uh, you'll find there. Yeah. So from uh, Andoni Ting, uh, the he will would write like to write about sports or games or that. Thank you. Uh, from Mary Jane Paginto, uh, pa help naman po pano tanggalin yung mute. Ah, uh, okay lang po yan. Okay. Uh, hindi daw niya marine. Yeah. Uh, Can you try so, again, Sir J? Sorry. I'll try again. Yeah. Uh, still cannot. Okay. Um, from Andre Rose Santos to everyone, uh, she would like to write about family, current events, love, or horror. Okay. Uh, from Jeanette Ann Reyes Macaraig, um, she, uh, she would like to write about Philippine folk dances. Okay. Uh, I think uh, one way for me to be able to properly address. Uh, the participants, especially the participants that join us on Zoom, okay, uh, will be if you write uh, or you, you rename yourself. And when you rename yourself, please also write the school that you come from so that it's easy. So if you're going to look at my screen, it says Del J. Villanueva, LSGH. So that's, it's easy for me to tell you, uh, to, to properly identify you, okay? So thank, you example, that, thank you for that, Jay, because that's supposed to be my job to remind everyone <laughs> to put their schools <laughs> and their oh, names. Oh. Thank naman, you uh, for reminding me. We're, meet, we're, meet, we're meeting like ano, 300, 400, 500 people online. And yes. uh, ano, um, also, if you are, uh, are accessing this through an, a mobile phone, usually your name becomes the name of your phone. So, sayang naman. Ayo ko naman bigyan ng tumawag ng uh, Oppo A9 ganon o kaya uh, Huawei Y9 <laughs> sayang di ba yes. so let this be a meeting of minds uh, throughout the people uh, across the country who is our or uh, uh, participating in the webinar today yes and also ano uh, if we need you guys to re rename yourselves, put your name in your school so we can check your attendance and send you your certificate of attendance later on. So, requirement pala, pala talaga siya. Yes, requirement. Oh, okay. Yes. Kailangan Thank po. you, Jay, for reminding me. Yeah. <laughs> and if you have uh, friends, uh, this is what uh, something that you can do now. If you have friends, nga, uh, uh, as Alan said earlier, that want to watch this one but were not able to register, you can share the Facebook link on the Brilliant Creations Publishing uh, Facebook page. And then uh, you can also use the hashtags uh, Kalbo ang speaker ko. Okay? Hashtag Brilliant Creations or BC Publishing. Okay? And you can also uh, use the hashtag Creative Nonfiction Writing in the password. Okay. So now I will share my screen. So I will. Okay. I'm crossing my fingers that it will work. And yes, it did. Okay. So I'm now going to share my screen and we'll start my presentation. So ladies and gentlemen, this is my presentation for this afternoon. It's creative nonfiction in the virtual class classroom. Okay. So if we're going to ask, you're going to ask me what creative nonfiction is, I can actually tell you right now and then the webinar will be over. But uh, it's better that we learn together. So let's do this together. Okay. Uh, also, Throughout this this seminar, I would like to add to the house rules. Uh, one, because this is such a a trying time, let us uh, keep these two these two hours that we are together as a held space. So it's our responsibility to keep each other safe. 
ah uh, ayoko naman na biglang masira yung experience niyo tapos mer- dahil merong biglang nag-zoom bomb ng ating experience okay um this is an online writing workshop so uh, there is a writing component and there is a reading component here so please have uh, something to write with uh, a pen will be okay uh, if you have a pencil there mas maganda if you're comfortable uh, typing on your phone it will be a beautiful experience also but if you have a pen and paper that's very very good okay um and um before doing anything raise your hand to ask permission that is what i usually tell my students but because we are friends and we are teachers you don't have to do that just chat me through the chat okay ayan tapos if there are problems with the signal or if for example bigla ko nagfreeze na ganun please tell me na lang po on the chat also kasi baka mamaya hindi natin siya makita okay yes now so hi okay okay so i'm jay uh if you if you want to ask questions please um please call me jay okay uh ako po si jay okay and then uh ako po ay isang guro ituturo po ako sa senior high school uh alan i don't think i uh, know they they can guess what i teach in uh in school so gawin natin contest okay gawin natin contest uh for those people uh hindi po kasama yung mga ka-school ko uh pero if you can try to guess what subject i teach okay what subject i teach uh type it out right now in the chat and the first person who will actually guess what oh we have I a teach. winner already no that's it ano pero that's right but what in particular ah kailangan uh, specific okay lang specific so i teach high school yes i teach science in high school oo pero anong tinuturo ko as a science Diba? Science improv daw, sir. Uh, uh, pwede naman. Uh, improv <laughs> has a very, very big uh, part in science. Uh, pero we'll see. Ano pa ang ano? Meron yeah. earth science? Uh, hindi po. Hindi po ako earth science uh, teacher. Biology? Okay. Physics? Or biology, physics. Lagi, po, lagi pong may ano, no? physics. Ano? Porkit kalbo, physics na. Ganun. Okay. Or chemistry dahil kalbo. Hmm. Uh, wala pa ako nakikita. And nakakatuwa po kasi kung tinitingnan niyo uh, kung sinusubaybayan niyo rin yung chat. Okay? Uh, nakikita niyo rin na yung mga uh, guesses ng mga kasama natin. So, psychology, wala pong psychology ata sa ano sa senior high school. Practical research po. Uh, dream ko po 'yan. Dream ko 'yan. Oo, pero hindi po. Okay? Ah uh, Sige po, bigyan po po natin ng five uh, people to guess. Okay. Anatomy. Uh, part po siya ng general ano biology, pero hindi po siya part ng ano talaga. Okay, one, two. So, sige po, last ten seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, to one. Marami pong salamat sa inyong mga guests at alam ko po dahil sa delay ng Zoom, uh, magkakaroon din po lang ganyan. Uh, but, okay, ang sinuturo ko po talaga ay disaster readiness, risk reduction, and management. So, DRRR teacher po ako ngayon sa senior high school. Um, Yun yung next guest ko, sir. <laughs> Salamat <Ayaw>. alam. <laughs> oo. Kasi nabanggit na lahat eh, hindi lang ata nabanggit ay ang BRRR. Baka nakakalimutan nila na oo. Part pala siya ng uh, senior high school. So STEM teacher po ako. Uh, but one thing that I realized is that when I do teach DRRM or when I te- do teach DRR, okay? Uh, there is a a general idea and I think it's it's Uh, part and parcel or the subject or I think it's a common experience for DRRM teachers or DRR teachers is that they usually have uh, or if you have a particular student you always have a student who does not care if the experience does not happen to them 
So for example, ay okay lang naman akong bagyuhin kasi hindi naman ako apektado. Or baka mamaya, ay okay lang naman po uh, magkaroon ng baha. Alam ko po, hindi naman talaga ako babahain. Diba? Or ay may sunog, buti na lang hindi dito. So, na-bother ako doon. Personally, na-bother ako bilang isang VRR teacher uh, na hindi lang pala sa school ko o sa iilang school nangyayari yon. Sa maraming skwelahan pala nangyayari yon na maraming mga walang pakialam ng mga sudyante. So, nakakahiya. Okay. Or hindi mo naka- sorry, na hindi nakakahiya, nakakalungkot na may mga sudyante tayo na hindi engaged. Okay? Or pag kinentuhan sila, ay okay lang yun, kahit anong mangyari, wala namang mangyayari sa akin. So, naisip ko na one way of making people have pakialam or be engaged in this kind of conversation or to have these kinds of conversation is to ex- is to read about these people or to write about their experiences because they themselves do not experience what other people experience. So, uh, doon po mapasok po yung aking uh, yung ating creative nonfiction. Okay. So, kunyari po kung siya po ay naging estudyante niyo no uh, ngayon okay ganun po ba din ang tingin niyo sa kanya okay so hindi ko na po uh, i- ibibitin ako po ito nung high school ako okay so nung ako po ay high school ako ay isang uh, taong uh, uh, they describe me as a, a person who like to think and thinker and that's true because i'm usually quiet and reading inside the in the inside the classroom okay dahil mahilig po ako magkwento. Okay? Mahilig ako magkwento. At kung hindi makikinig sa kwento, okay lang. Pero sayang kasi marami mga hindi matikinigan. Okay. So, at this point, uh, I would like to invite everyone to help me set uh, this seminar into motion. Okay? Uh, if you have your cell, uh, your your mobile phone or uh, an entry device, please go to menti.com. Okay? So, just type that Uh, www.menti.com and when you go to that uh, that uh, website, you are going to actually be asked to enter a code. So this is what your screen will look like. And please enter the code 906165. Okay? Again, please enter the code 906165. I will type the code or the Menti code in the chat right now so that when I shift Okay, screens uh, to another uh, presentation. Okay, uh, you would still remember what the code is. So again, it's www.menti.com, and I will ask you to enter the Menti code 906165. So at this point, I will stop uh, this presentation for a while, and then I will move to a different part uh, presentation. Okay. Stop sharing at this time. And then I will now move to a different presentation. And share that screen. Okay, so there. Okay, so the question for today is what are my expectations for today's seminar? So if you enter that code, uh, the code is 906165 and submit, okay? Then you're going to also see that question, okay? You're also going to see that question. Uh, Jay, I think it's 906195, right? Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. 906195. My, my bad. So 90. 6195. Uh, it's on the top of the screen also here. Okay. And uh, when you submit that, you're going to be asked this question. Uh, what are my expectations for today's seminar? You can enter up to three words or phrases and kindly do that now. Okay. Uh, so that we can uh, so that we can move. And as you're doing that, you're going to see up. As you're doing that, you're going to see words appear on the screen in our uh, in a very good cloud fashion. Okay. 
Okay. So let's say, for example, uh, if someone enters hi, yeah, ayan, ah, meron nang pumapasok. Sige, go po. Okay. Sige lang. I'll give you maybe three to five minutes so that we can see what we can put here or what we can include and not include, what we can gloss over and not gloss over, what we can put in as more ideas. Okay. And the good thing about this is this is being done in real time. So as you're entering the ideas, we're seeing which of these ideas will be our focus or foci for today. Okay. Because the more people who share the same words, okay, will have now larger words. Yeah. So you want uh, for now you can see that engaging, exciting, and new learning, okay, online teaching, creativity, engaging. Okay. These are words now that that are uh, dancing on our screen. Okay. Let's uh, have two more minutes for this one. Uh, I was being asked, is this uh, website free? Uh, I will answer that maybe later. It's usually not. Yun yung ano, yun yung sagot ko. It's usually not free. But there are uh, different tools like this that you can use also. Uh, just search it up uh, in the internet. Okay. Talagang hindi nawawala yung learning, creativity, engaging, ano? Sige. So, one more minute. Okay. And then we'll, pre uh, we'll process this one. Thirty seconds. Okay. Twenty. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Okay. So it will still move uh, because it's processing what you have entered already, and if you. Uh, we're not able to send in your answer to the question. Uh, you can chat me up in the group chat, uh, and I will see that. I, I will try my best to address that later. Okay. So uh, the uh, the the glaring winners in the contest of the expectations for today's seminar is that it will deal with uh, a lot about creativity. I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it will tap into the creativity of the students and of the teacher. We expect it to be engaging, exciting. Uh, there will be new learnings. There's engaging learning. And um, it will be fun. And there will be adaptability. Thank you for everyone who submitted and who shared their ideas for the expectations for today's webinar. Okay, But it doesn't end there. Okay, So I'm going to click on this one now. Okay, And I will try to move the presentation and I have now three new questions okay so this one is a slide so when you look at your cell phone and when you or when you look at your device you're going to have you you now have three questions there um, either slide it from strongly disagree to strongly agree yeah. and in real time we will find out how many participants uh, have done it before, will be doing it, okay. 
are considering doing it, are comfortable in doing it. Maraming salamat ulit dun sa mga nagpa-participate uh, dito sa ating ano natin, dito sa ating uh, exercise before we continue on with our webinar. It is, I think, a good way or it's a good practice that we do this also with our students and find uh, creative ways of actually uh, getting immediate feedback from them. Okay. Yeah. So far, uh, for the 26 people who shared, okay, uh, NASA 4, I have read written creative nonfiction. I have used creative nonfiction in the classroom already, 3.1. Uh, I'm comfortable, 3.4. Okay, let's give it another minute or two okay. so that more people can engage themselves in putting values into our survey. Maraming salamat po sa mga nag uh, na sumasagot okay. sa ating uh, survey. Isang minuto na lang po. Uh, let's have one more minute. Thirty seconds. Twenty. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Ulit po, maraming salamat sa mga nag-contribute uh, dito po sa pagsagot nitong survey na ito or ang ating uh, situationer. Okay. And uh, dadalaw pa po yan kasi pumapasok pa lang po yung ibang mga uh, votes, votes o kaya ang uh, mga contribution. Uh, ito po. Okay. So if we look at uh, the picture of the participants of this webinar, okay, uh, among the ones who answered, they said that 3.6 or they rate that I have read, read or written creative nonfiction 3.5. Okay. So, meron na tayong mga experience sa uh, creative nonfiction. Hindi tayo start from zero. Okay? Um, at meron din, uh, kalah halos kalahati sa atin siguro, or a little more or less than kalahati, ay nakagamit na ng creative nonfiction sa classroom. Lapang problema yan. And a little over, okay, a little over kalahati, or a little over half our participants who answered this uh, survey, okay, Say that they're comfortable. Oops, bumababa. Pero say that they're comfortable, okay, in using creative nonfiction in the classroom. So, ulit po, maraming salamat po sa pag-participate in this part of our webinar. Okay, I will now stop sharing my screen and shift to another part uh, presentation, uh, to the original presentation. Yan. Okay, so, yan po. Okay, so, ngayon po na alam na natin ang ating ano, uh, situation ng ating mga participants sa ating uh, webinar, kausapin po natin ng ating sarili. So, gawa po, uh, ito po ay isang uh, exercise na pwede nyo pong gawin sa mga bata. Simulan po natin sa naaalala mo pa nung tayo ay nagpunta sa, tapos buuin nyo po yung pangungusap, at sagutin mo rin ang sarili mo, okay? Balaan lang po natin ang mga kasama natin sa bahay na baka mamaya po sila po ay magulat na kayo po ay kinakausap niyo ang inyong mga sarili. Okay? Pero pwede niyo rin naman pong gawin, okay? Nasabihin na, o kakausapin ko lang ang sarili ko, tapos gawin niyo po ito. So naaalala mo pa nung tayo ay nagpunta sa, 
tapos bu- bu- buuin ang pangusap at sagutin mo rin ng oo at ito nangyari. At, so, pwede nyo rin naman pong gawin in English. Okay? Remember when lang. At sagutin nyo rin po ang sarili nyo ng yes and lang. Okay? Kung gagawin nyo po itong sarili nyo, uh, gagawin nyo po ito sa mga uh, bilang isang exercise, okay? Hindi naman po kayo, uh, una po, in-expect ko na matatawa kayo sa sarili nyo. Pangalawa, makakapag, uh, makakaalala kayo, will, you will remember a particular point in time when you did something. When you, when those memories come back, okay, you'll be able to tell a story about that. And that story will be a very, very truthful story because it comes from your experience. Okay? So, uh, I will divide this afternoon's sharing into five parts. And so that it will be easy for us to remember which part we are where, okay? Uh, I will use the metaphor of the hand, okay? So, my sharing will be uh, divided into what is happening now, okay? What is creative nonfiction? What are examples of creative nonfiction? Why is it a beautiful tool? Or if you want to consider it a strategy or approach, okay? Or it's also a nice way of, uh, well, the last one will be, How can we use it inside our classroom or inside the virtual classroom? Okay, so uh, let's move on to the first one. So first, what is happening now? Okay. We know that all of us are thrust into this new normal. And part and parcel of the adjustments that we are trying to do into going into this new normal is finding activities that will allow our students to get a semblance of normalcy, okay? Even if weird things are happening around us, uh, once we have uh, plotted out our lessons, we can start looking at activities to ask our students to do at home, okay? To be part of a learning packet that we will send to their home. Uh, for them to be doing this alone, or for them to be able to do this alone or with minimal intervention. So this, uh, this is the situation that we are thrust in right now. No one wanted this to happen, kumbaga. So because no one wanted this to happen, we want to find ways to ease our students in more ways than one. Okay. Um, again, because we, ha- we are of different paths or different experiences, we also have different ways of responding to this. And not for anything else, the way that we respond to whatever is happening to us at the moment is a very rich way of making the students situate themselves into what they are studying. In fact, when you look at when the students look at what they're studying through the eyes of experience then it will make more meaning to them and they will actually answer the age old question para saan ba tong pinag-aaralan ko so kung tayong mga guro as teachers if we can help them make more meaning with what they're doing and what they're experiencing in the day to day then it will be a richer experience for all of us. Okay. So, isang point of reflection ay, mahilig po ba tayo manood ng mga reality TV shows? Okay. Kung kayo po ay mahilig manood ng reality TV shows, bakit? Bakit kaya? We all have our reasons bakit tayo mahilig mag- uh, manood sa reality TV shows. Kung kayo po ay uh, willing po mag-share, pwede po kayo magsagot sa chat natin Uh, kung ano ang paborito niyong reality TV show at bakit siya ang naging paborito niyo. Isa siyang point of reflection. Bakit? Kadalasan po ang mga reality TV shows ay pinitilian uh, ng mga maraming tao. Okay. Uh, kung ako po ang tatanungin niyo, isa po sa mga favorite reality TV shows ay ang Survivor na hanggang ngayon po ata ay available pa rin. 
Okay. Parang Survivor 40 na ata yung uh, yung nagra-run ngayon. Dahil, uh, hindi ko siya napapanood o hindi ko siya nasusubaybayan dahil sa gawain sa eskwelahan pero uh, dahil uh, exciting yung mga pangyayari sa Survivor at yung mga games doon ay pag napanood ko or na chance na when I get a chance to watch it, mapapanood ko siya. Oo, ako man. Okay. So, naisip na po ba natin kung kayo ay kung kayo ay naging mahilig sa reality TV show na Okay. Kadalasan, nagiging mahilig ang mga tao sa reality show dahil itong ay nagpapakita ng katotohanan. Okay? At dahil siya ay nagpapakita ng katotohanan or nag, nagpapakita ng totoong mga nangyayari sa buhay ng mga tao, okay? so, paano siya mag-respond ng pangyari? Okay? Habang pinapanood natin ng isang bagay na yon, pwede natin mag-discursuhan. Pwede tayo mag-discussion. Pwede tayo mag-usap. Pwede natin kausapin ang ating mga katabi. At dahil kinakausap natin ang ating mga katabi at dahil alam natin na yung mga katabi natin ay meron din mga sariling opinion, nagiging lively yung discussion na yon. Minsan nga, pagdating sa umaga, pinagkukwentuhan nyo pa rin kung ano yung nangyari kagabi. At, uh, at uh, with matching uh, gestures pa na, Grabe, ganun na nangyari. Bakit siya yung natanggal? Bakit dapat si ganito natanggal? Okay. Uh, bakit si ganito ay nagstay? Ha? Bakit may plot twist na ganun? So, kung tayo ay nae-excite sa ganung paraan, okay, ganun din po ang mga estudyante natin. Okay. Minsan, mas nae-excite pa siya, sila na kung ang lesson natin ay pakwento or parang pinagchichismisan lang po natin yung lesson natin. Okay? So, kung kukunin natin yung idea na yon na pinagchichismisan or chismis or chinichismis natin sa mga sudyante yung lesson natin, uh, nagiging mas maganda, mas palatable, mas madaling lunukin. Okay? At doon din po tayo papasok sa parang ganun din po ang creative non-fiction. So, nandun na po tayo sa ating second part. Ano po ba ang creative non-fiction? Okay. So, kung tayo po ay ayan. Ayan. So, kung hahanap po tayo ng isang definition or definition ng creative non-fiction, we can say that creative non-fiction is a branch of writing that employs the literary techniques usually associated with fiction or poetry to respond or to report on actual person, places, or events. Importante po na ito po ay hindi kathang isip lamang. Totoong nangyari ito. Okay? Kaya nga po siya non-fiction. Gumagamit lang tayo ng creative na pamara- pamamaraan or isang literary technique para maikwento natin ng mas maayos itong kwento na to na nangyari sa totoong buhay. Okay? Pwede nating sabihin din na literary non-fiction okay? or literary journalism or literar- literature of fact. Okay? So according to Nordquist, Uh, in 2018, ito ang kanyang mga examples or mga iba pang mga pamamaraan kung paano tinatawag ang creative non-fiction. In fact, sa science po, uh, ang tawag po nito ay imaginative science writing. Okay? Uh, ang pamamaraan, uh, isang malikhaing pamamaraan ng pagsusulat ng agham or tungkol sa agham pero katotohanan pa rin ang kanyang pinagsusulat. Okay. Okay. Now, other people will call it literary non-fiction or narrative non-fiction or literary journalism, imaginative non-fiction, lit- lyric essay, literary memoir, or a personal essay, even a personal narrative. This is also uh, in the realm or in the subgenre of what we call creative non-fiction. Okay. Now, so, ano-ano ang mga kabilang sa creative non-fiction? Kapag tayo ay gumawin ng memoir or personal essay o kaya isang libro tungkol sa meditations on certain ideas, if we look at literary journalism or nature writing or city writing, travel writing, journals, letters, cult- cultural commentary, hybrid forms, and even sometimes, though, uh, depending on the way that it's written, autobiographical fiction because the way that the writer writes about himself affects him too. Okay? 
this can be part of what we call creative nonfiction. So the moment that we use any of these things, either as a published work or kayo mismo ang gumawa, or pinagawa niyo ng ganito ang mga sudyante, siya ay pumapasok na sa mundo ng creative nonfiction. Okay. So, what does creative nonfiction look like? Ano bang itsura ng creative nonfiction? Okay. Kunyari po, uh, ini-invite ko po kayong basahin itong paragraph na to. At ito pong paragraph na to ay isang uh, pwede nating tawagin encyclopedic way of writing about the topic. Ngayon po, paano kung tatanungin ko kayo, uh, may, ano, uh, it's very full of information, it's full of information, pero minsan kung ang buong teksto na babasahin natin ay ganito ang pagsusulat, baka hindi natin matapos yung text. Baka lang naman. Baka lang naman. Okay? So, paano pag sinulat ko na ganito? It's the same information except that it's written like a story. Okay? Uh, pwede po nating sabihin na ang creative nonfiction ay nasa gitna ng creative writing at technical writing. Kung uh, kung sanay po tayo magbasa ng creative uh, creative writing or the the results of creative writing in our literature subjects or in our language subjects and we have technical writing in our science subjects. It's a happy marriage, okay? it's a medium na if you want to teach uh, a student to go one from another, pwede po natin padaanin sa genre ng creative nonfiction. Para nga hindi po mabigla or hindi po siya ka, uh, biglang uh, manibago. Okay? Uh, especially if we're going to grade them for content rather than the style of writing. Okay? So kung mapapansin niyo po, uh, medyo mas masaya po itong basahin kaysa dun sa isa. Okay? Ito po ay isa na namang example. Napakahaba po nito. Okay? But it is an uh, it is an encyclopedic uh, entry for uh, supervised learning. Okay? In the in the realm of computers. Okay? Medyo mabigat. Pero dahil nga po, pwede naman natin siyang uh, isulat ng mas ma- mas makwento Okay. We can write it in this way. Medyo mas mahaba, pero dahil nga siya ay mas magaan basahin, okay? Pwede natin siyang basahin ito na as is. At minsan, mas nakaka-enjoy. Okay? Ito po yung ano gusto nating ma- mangyari sa creative nonfiction or sa paggamit ng creative nonfiction. Mas mag-enjoy ang mga bata or mga estudyante in the experience ng classroom. Okay. So the question will be, okay, would you rather read writing that's clear and functional to read, okay, or writing that's clear and functional but nothing more, okay? Yung mga naunang examples dun sa uh, ano dun sa pinakita natin are very clear and very functional, but they might not be enjoyable to read, okay? But the second examples of those uh, of the two sets that I showed you, okay, are clear, functional and fun to read. Okay. And that's a good uh, way to check if what we're doing or what we're dealing with is creative nonfiction. So, according to Lee Goodskin, okay, whenever you deal with creative nonfiction, they are true stories well told. Okay. Yeah. At kumulog po dito sa amin. Uh, kwento ka lang po dito po sa Quezon City ay upuulan po ngayon. So, kung makakarinig po kayo ng kulog ay dahil umuulan po talaga. Okay. So, okay. in other words, uh, when uh, according to Lee Goodkin, and I quote, the words creative and non-fiction describe the form. The word creative refers to the use of literary craft, the techniques fiction writers, playwrights, and poets employ to present non-fiction, factually accurate prose about real people and events in a compelling, vivid, dramatic manner. The goal is to make non-fiction stories read like fiction so that the readers are as enthralled by fact as they are by fantasy." Unquote. Okay. 
Now, okay, how do we know that it is creative nonfiction? Kung kayo po ay makakakuha ng isang akda, pwede niyo pong sabihin na the author is present in this kind of uh, work. Kung baga sa ano po, uh, kadalasan siya ay first person. Okay? Uh, throughout the text, merong nag- nagkakaroon siya ng self-discovery and self-motivation. Okay? It is not just one kind of form. You can uh, you can have creative nonfiction in a poetic form. You can have it in an essay form. You can even have it in a children's book form. But importantly, you are you feel that there is veracity or there is a truthfulness in the way that it's written. And of course, that there is literary approaches or there are literary approaches used in the writing of that work. Kunyari, kung tayo po ay kakanta nito na ako ay may lobo lumipad sa langit. Di ko na nakita pumutok na pala. Sayang ang pera ko pambili ng lobo kung pagkain sana nabusog pa ako. Ngayon, I know that this is a, a well-known song already. But if you look at it not as a song but as some but as a student's kwento okay na ma'am sir ito po yung nangyari nag ako po yung may lobo lumipad sa langit di ko na nakita pumutok na pala sayang ang pera ko pambili ng lobo kung pagkain sana pasok pa ako lahat po yung sinabi niya yon okay answer the four things that i said okay the author is present He talks about himself. He, she, or they talk about themselves. Okay. It there is a journey na nangyare. Okay. There's a flexibility of form. Pwede ako gumamit ng kanta. Okay. Pag kwento ko sa yuto na tong ganito, uh, it is very truthful. And there is an approach. There is a literary form. Para siyang may rhyme, di ba? So dahil nga merong ganon, matatawag natin siya na kung ito ay ginawang creative nonfiction, pwede natin siyang consider as creative nonfiction. Ulit. Okay? Okay, ako ay lobo. True. May katotohanan. Lumipad sa langit. May author's perspective. Okay. Di ko na nakita pumutok na pala. You retell the events in a literary form. Okay. Okay. At may points of reflection. Sayang ang pera ko pambili ng lobo. Kung pagkain sana, nabusog pa ako. So why Jay? Why did you ask us to sing? Or bakit tayo kumanta? It's because it's a, it's one way of helping us remember how a creative nonfiction work looks like. Okay. So here are some samples of creative nonfiction. We can have research articles, okay, or we can also have personal essays. Uh, shout out po kay uh, Ginoong Ferdinand Kesigan Harin. Siya po ang isa sa mga Uh, nag-inspire sa akin na uh, mag-gumamit ng creative nonfiction sa akin pagtuturo. Okay? At i-share po itong mga bagay na ito sa inyo. Siya po yung author ng Anim na Sabado ng Big Play. Uh, ito po ay isang akdang uh, makikita ninyo uh, sa mga bookstore. Okay? Okay? Pwede rin po mang, namang mga storybooks. Okay? Okay? Pwede rin mga critique. Okay? Pwede mga speeches, or in this case, it's a compilation of speeches. Okay? Not necessarily by that particular author, pwede iba naman. Um, pwede namang memoir. Okay? At uh, some people consider the Confessions of St. Augustine the first memoir ever written. Okay? So, kung pwede natin, uh, kung tatanungin natin ng mga studyante natin, ano po ang mga pwede natin paggawa bilang samples of creative nonfiction as a way for them to express themselves. Pwede natin sabihin na sa kanila na sumulat ng isang personal essay or ng isang blog post or sumulat ng isang food article or feature article. In fact, pwede po natin silang pasulatin ng recipe at ihalo ang katotohanan nangyayari habang nagluluto sila nung, nung particular recipe na yon. Na kapag kayo ay nagluto ng adobong puti uh, versus isang uh, isang kakaibang recipe na oh, adobo sa gata. Ano yung mga kakaibang nangyayari? Nagagalit ba ang nanay nila kapag nagluto sila ng ganito dahil uh, hindi siya nakakakain ng gata? 
pag mayroong mga ganun mga bagay, pwede na natin silang i-consider uh, na papalapit na towards creative non-fiction. Basta totoong nangyayari. Okay? Um, kung uh, kayo po ay nabuhay sa panahon ng uh, EDSA Revolution at kayo po ay nandun sa EDSA mismo, okay, at, uh, o kayo po ay na, nasaksihan niyo ang huling pagdalaw ng Haley's Comet, a recount of a historical event as a personal story is an example of a creative non-fiction. Okay? Pwede po niyong pagawain ng mga sudyante ng mga concept books. Kunyari, paano nabubuhay ang isda sa viewpoint ng isda? O kaya, paano or how to? Uh, paano gumawa ng isang origami crane? O kaya, paano gumawa ng isang origami tamaraw? You know? uh, paano sumulat ng isang kalambuhay o isang biography? Mas pagsulat ng travel articles. Okay. Pagsulat ng critiques, katulad nga nang na-mention kanina, at mga iba't ibang klaseng review, katulad ng movie review, restaurant review, book review, at album review. Ngayon po, uh, magkakaroon po tayo ng isang break. Okay? Pero bago po tayo mag-break, uh, during the break po, uh, kayo po ay sinihikayat na uh, magpunta na po sa CR, uh, uminom po ng tubig, uh, hydrate yourselves, and if you want, Okay, and if you want, and if you can, try to look for this game po. On Google, please search for Quo. Let's use this as our basis for our writing activity in the second half of our webinar. Okay, so search for Quo, okay, so that we have uh, uh, a similar and a, a shared experience. Okay, and then after that, okay, when you search for Quo, you're going, you're going to reach this point. Okay, and after that, you're going to reach a game. So whether you are on a mobile phone or on a laptop or on a desktop computer, you're going to have these experience. Uh, what I wanted to do is to experience this together, or that we will experience this together. So paglaroan, maglaro po, uh, paglaroan itong game na ito during the 10-minute break that we will have. Okay. Uh, also, okay. So once we play the game, if you fail the first time, that's okay. Try, try several times, but don't forget to go to the restroom. Uh, this, use this time to go to the restroom. Also, get some writing materials if you don't have it yet. Uh, drink some water. Okay. So at this point, I will pause my screen. And Alan, are you there? Yes. yes. Yes, I'm here. Oh. Okay. Are, uh, is it okay that we have our 10-minute break right now? Yes. Oh. Okay. Um, so, again, 10 minutes, na, Jay? Yes, yes. Tama. Yes, so okay. we'll have a 10-minute break. And uh, if you can see my screen, um, just some reminders that after the webinar, please fill out the evaluation form that we will send via email. Okay. So that we can improve our future webinars. And then, okay. as soon as we get the evaluation forms, we will send you the e-certificates of attendance. And then, if if somehow for some reason you get cut off from the Zoom, you just just click on the link again that we provided to get back. So see you after ten minutes. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Alan. And I know um, reminder lang to go to the website that Jay um, suggested that qwop coop fadi.net and get ready with your pens and papers. Thank you.
brilliant creations, we believe that education is the key to unlocking a child's potential. We're here to serve students by providing learning solutions that are engaging and relevant so that students will become interested to learn and ready to thrive in this increasingly competitive world. We follow a thematic integrated approach for preschool. Critical thinking and decision making for elementary. A spiral and culturally relevant approach for junior high school. And introducing a more comprehensive approach through specific track-based learning for senior high school. Our materials are available in ebook and print format to adapt to different learning needs. We want to make a difference in the lives of students through quality education. At Brilliant Creations, we live to educate.
Okay. So, um, I think nakalayo ako ng ilang meters. It was, it's very funny, pero I can't figure out how to do it. <laughs> well, uh, part and parcel of the thing that I asked, I wanted you to experience is to actually find out how to control that that runner. Right. And oh, and you and you'll realize that because the title is Quop, Q W O P, then Q uh, when you press Q. It controls something when you press W. It right. controls something. Oh something, my. Something. So yeah, I was able to move forward, but it was very funny looking. No, it, it didn't look like he was running. <laughs> well, it was really it, that's really part of the game. That uh, th- that's why I wanted to experience it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, in, uh, so let's start. Um, I'll go back to sharing my screen. Okay. And okay, to. Ayan. So after uh, after playing the game, okay, after playing the game, uh, can you answer the? Uh, this is uh, the writing part of our webinar. Let's talk about it first. Okay, how did you feel? Now, because of the sheer number of people who are actually um, attending this webinar, if you want to write down, uh, write down your answer to this one. I'll give you a minute. Kindly write. How did you feel as you were the motions of, uh, of the motions, or how to control the motions of your of your uh, runner? Okay, how did you feel? Tell tell us as truthfully as you can. Okay, and I won't ask you to to share. Don't worry, I won't ask you to do that. Um, just that as it as this is the writing part of our webinar or as this is our writing part uh, the writing part that you can ask your students to do you can actually ask your students to write down immediately how do they feel after looking at something so after playing the game how did you feel that's my first question my next question would be okay, if your answer was Fox lang, okay, then that's not really an answer in the sense it gives us a feeling of what happened, but it didn't give us an answer of how did you feel. Diba parang ang lab, uh, ako personally, I don't, uh, I, I have this problem. When, when somebody, unless somebody tells me how they are, I will not assume, I will not even try to, to, to guess. Okay? So if you're mad at me, you tell me immediately. I'm mad at you because of the following item. I'm disappointed at you because of the following item. I'm happy because of the following item. Because if I'm given the answer na, uh, so how was the test? Ox lang. Ako personally, I don't... Uh, I, okay, so what will I do with Ox? Or worse, uh, if you remember uh, uh, in the past when we did a lot of text messaging and then you, you enter a, a long line of text and then ang sagot lang sa'yo K. Okay. So, ang sagot ko lagi nun, oh, so, bakit maging potassium at meron? So, something like that. But if your answer was ox lang, why was it ox lang? Okay. Try to find out or try to, to gauge. Was it a boo or a yay? Was it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Because once you start do, going through this motion, then it's going to lead us to a more truthful answer. Because the next question would be, was the feeling the same from start to finish? So I'll pause right now and give you a minute to put this all together. And if you want to write down your answer to these four questions or to these three questions, do that now. And let's reflect on our answer before we move on to the next slide. Okay? So your one minute for writing your answer to these four questions starts now. seconds. Now, if you really want to share your answer, 
I will not stop you. Please, you can you can share your answer on the chat for everyone else to to, to read. And um, I will be very happy if other people will give us our answer. Uh, I would like to shout out to Jr. Rama, Jr. Jmar Rama. And Jmar Rama said, "It activates my patience in finding the right combination to make the avatar move forward." Thank you. Uh, uh, Priscilla Maravillas from, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is Le Ateneum. Uh, I almost lost patience. Okay. Uh, Andoni Ting from LSGH says, "Frustrated. Ang hirap pero kapag nagawa ang saya." Okay. Uh, Miss Ruby Bernisto. Okay. Uh, challenge. It's kind of cooking. Okay. Uh, it's a it's a yay. Okay. And was the feeling the same from start to finish? Yes. Okay. So uh, I felt the frustration till I stopped and experienced lagging connections. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, I hope that the situation, the internet situation, will become better uh, sooner than later. Okay. Okay. So if I ask you now to use all of your senses as sources of information based on the experience that you had playing Quop. Can you tell me what you saw and what you heard or what you smelled and what you felt and what you tasted? Okay? So, if you want to write that onto a piece of paper, please do that. If you want to type that into the chat, that I would be more than willing to read the, uh, it out loud and give you a shout out. Please do not forget to when you when you sign in, rename yourself and rename yourself together with the name of your school, so that we can pass it. Uh, we can uh, we can provide that information to the organizers of the seminar. Uh, while people are writing, okay, or either on pieces of paper or on uh, the chat group. Um, Maria Estelita Vega says that it was a yay. I thought that it was easy, but afterwards I felt challenged. Then I started figuring out how to play it. I tried pop, but it doesn't make me move forward. So I tried QO and WP. I made 3.3 meters. Lol. That, that's actually a good... The first time I did pop, I did like what? 0.3 meters. So that was a really bad, uh, a bad start. So, uh, Glenn Lagunsad said that it was kind of boring at first, but challenging. Thank you, Glenn. Okay. And from JC Sichon, I think JC Sichon is already answering this one. So, uh, what you saw, heard, smelled, felt, and tasted, uh, the answer is dead. Okay. Uh, we're waiting for other people to share their answers. Uh, this is, I think, for Kwok pa. Masaya na nakakatawa kasi hindi man lang ako nakalayo sa line. Haha. <laughs> Pero it's a yay for me. Thank you, Joy Lisel Botter from PIMA. Okay. So, uh, going back to our writing exercise. If you use your senses as sources of information, can you tell me what you saw, heard, smelled, felt, or tasted? If I ask you to write, for example, about the, situa- the traffic situation in Metro Manila, and you are in the middle of traffic without a car and it's raining, then you can actually, it's easy for you to viscerally tell me what you see, what you hear, what you smell, feel, and taste. Okay. If you are asked to be a garbage collector for a day, then it's going to be easy to use our senses. It helps us situate ourselves, it grounds ourselves into the writing. And if you ask your students to do this inside the classroom, then it grounds their writing into something real, into something palpable, into something that other people can actually gauge, measure, find the degree of. And it will be easier for you to, be, uh, to for other people to sympathize with you or to empathize with you based on the ones that you write. Um, Aisa, Aisa from SAI, ah, sorry. Aisa from S-A-L-I-Q-C says that I was frustrated because I was unable to move more than three meters. And 
for everyone who played WoW or for everyone who tried that experience, everyone will feel that frustration. And because that is that, then it's not fiction, it's truth. It's something that you can write about. And because it's something that you can write about and it's the truth, then other people will get what you're saying more. Okay. So, okay. If you, I ask you now to write about your experience and ask you to narrate your experience uh, for me, okay? then I ask you, uh, this one please uh, answer in the chat. Out of 10, would you do it again? Would you do that? Would you have that experience again? Or would you actually put in work? Would you practice uh, for you to make it better? I remember when I first start, I, I was challenged play uh, basketball on Facebook. Uh, it came to the point that I had to use a ruler so that my shots into the would go directly into the basket. Okay? And it's a, it's a something. Uh, reading the chat, uh, Raziel said, I thought at first it was very easy, but then I'm excited and challenged myself to repeat and repeat. I got 1.1 meter. Uh, Raziel from College of St. John Rojas. Hi to you there. Uh, from Marisa Del Rosario, it, he he, it's a yay. Hindi man lang ako nakalayo, nakakatawa pa rin nakakatalent yet. Uh, from George Abbott to everyone, um, out of 10, would you do it again? Would you put in work to do it better? I think his answer to that one is yes. And as a shared experience spreads, or because we have the shared experience, when we write about it, it becomes real once more for everyone. Okay. So, the result of uh, using creative nonfiction in the classroom will result in a diverse array of output, reflecting the different uh, interests and viewpoints of the students. So, if you're going to ask me, so what? Para saan yung experience na experience ko sa akin say? It's because of this. By sharing a real experience, even if the experience is real, um, and it's the same experience for everyone, everyone will actually draw a different experience from that event. And by looking at it from different viewpoints, the, diff the students will have different reflections based on their interests, based on their viewpoints, and the output will be different. Okay. Uh, from Sandy Macias, hi, didn't give up, best shot 1.6 meters. Uh, thank you, Sandy. And from Juan Villarín Jr., uh, challenging from Ruby Bernisto 10. Okay, kailangan mo figure out yan. Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. Thank you for your answers. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to part four. Okay. okay. Please remember that when we use uh, creative nonfiction, uh, this is anchored on facts. It's rendered in literary techniques and part particularly in storytelling. Okay. So, why is it a beautiful tool or strategy or approach? Okay. Or why is it a way of doing things? We can consider creative nonfiction uh, as a way of doing things. Okay. So, uh, yeah. One reason is because uh, if you look at this picture, we might think our students are all the same as us. But in reality, it's not, that's not going to be true. They will have different ways of uh, approaching something. They will have different ways of reacting to something. Even if we think that they are the same or, or that we are the same, we are actually totally different. Okay. Uh, if you are familiar with the movie Rashomon, for example, in Rashomon, uh, there was one event experienced by four people. And these four people, throughout the movie gave different accounts of what happened because they experienced it different. Again, even if we play the same game, well, the output will be different. Therefore, if I ask you to write about it or to tell me a story about it, the story will be different. Uh, some people will be very, very uh, angry, very, very frustrated, to very, very challenged. And, very, uh, and for them, it was a very enjoyable experience. For example, Marisa Del Rosario says, Yes, I will do it again. 10. Try and try until you succeed. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, let's tie this up. 
Okay, let's tie up the experience of writing or reading creative nonfiction with the experiential learning cycle. Okay. So if you are familiar or if you remember the experiential learning cycle, it's of four parts. Experiencing, reflecting, generalizing, and applying in that in that continuum. So if you have um, this as our basis, then by reading uh, a piece that is written in literary form or as a part of creative nonfiction or as a, as a kind of creative nonfiction, we will see the experiences or we will feel the experiences of the writer. Okay? We are invited to reflect with the writer, make new generalizations, and apply them in our real lives. So if you ask them to read something or ask them to, uh, and then ask them to write about it, going through this process as well, then you're actually inviting the students to reflect on their experiences. And by reflecting on their experiences, they will find more meaning in what they're doing. This, and, I, and if I'm not mistaken, this is the goal that you want to achieve, especially if you want to put uh, a combination of synchronous and asynchronous uh, work. We want our students to experience, reflect, generalize, generalize, apply. And in one way or another, by by writing about it, then you can apply it twice or threefold. Now, in creating or uh, in using creative nonfiction, we remember that we want to target the experiential learning that the students might get in living their daily lives and accessing the prior knowledge of the students so that in their creation of new experiences in making generalizations they are invited to make better decisions or be more mindful of their mistakes or invite them to make more mistakes so that they can make better decisions in the future themselves. it makes more meaning it's at the bottom line is we want them to make more meaning with what they are doing especially if we ask them to do these things and we are not there to guide them. Okay? Especially when we are in a classroom setting, when we have a structured learning experience, kaya lang in this day and age, we cannot do that anymore. Or at this period in time, we can't do that. So we invite you to use an approach like this for asynchronous learning so that they can reflect on their own. Okay? How could they do that? Okay. When you have them do this, then you also, in one way or another, help them do proper debriefing for themselves. You allow them to relive their experience first. And then you allow them to explore the purpose, why you ask them to write about it. And then take that writing, take whatever they learn, and applying them to lessons in life, or applying the lessons they learned in life. Okay? Let it be a transformative experience for your students. And nagsulat pa lang sila niya na, what more yung nagsulat sila at pinag-usapan niyo pa. So, uh, the last part of my sharing this afternoon is ways of implementation. How can we use it? So, you have a list of, uh, of kinds of creative nonfiction and you have act, you can actually call works of creative nonfiction. So how can we use it? Okay. First, okay, you can use it as an approach. Okay. What if in the coming school year, you design your lessons in such a way that your class will feel like a workshop rather than as, as, as a classroom class? What if you design your class so that it's like a writing workshop or that they write a memoir as they go through the entire semester that they are with you? What if you ask them to make a diary, for example, okay, or to write reflection papers? And that will be the output every time that you have uh, your meeting. Let's say, for instance, you have a weekly meeting, weekly yung face-to-face -face ninyo, pero the rest of the week you're not going to meet. So why? what if you allow them to write passages every day and then at the end of the week make a generalization, this is what I liked, this is what I learned. Okay? 
So it's one of the ways that you can approach it, okay? And it's a truthful approach. It's a first-person approach, okay? Uh, what else? What if you give them a sample scenario that they read about and therefore they experience it uh, and then you ask them the same question that I asked you, Vanina. How do you feel? What do you think? Okay? And then write about it. Okay? Because they're writing about something that's true and something that's palpable, something that they can feel, then it's the truth. It is non-fiction. But ask them to write them in a story. Uh, ask them to write their experiences as a story in a narrative structure. Then it becomes creative non-fiction. Ask them to write them. Uh, ask them to write with the tools of a storyteller. Uh, then it becomes creative okay. In science writing, we can say that if you cannot communicate science to be accessible, then you cannot do science at all. Why? Because if uh, part and parcel of science is for people to share ideas, and if by sharing the ideas, ikaw lang yung excited, ito para malungkot yun. So how do we make other people excited? Let's learn how to communicate our science by making it onto, into a story. What if nagkwento ka ng science mo na parang chismis ka? Okay? Or parang ichinismis mo yung science mo? Okay? Baka it's one way of making people more interested in what they're doing and what they're experiencing or what they will experience. Okay. Now, what if you ask your students okay, to use the hero science they get in writing about the way they the math problem? Oo, alam ko, very technical lang math. Okay. Pero, what if, as a reflection, you ask them to take the hero cycle, okay, take the parts of the hero cycle, and use that as a, as a frame, as a reference, as a guide, in which the students tell you na, first I did this, then I did this, then I had a problem with this, but I overcome the problem, and now, as, a new, uh, as the new normal, I can do this, but this time better. What if ganon? Hindi kaya mas ma-enjoy na mga estudyante yung science because ngayon napagkakwentohan na nila? Or, what if you use plot analysis? Rising action, conflict, climax, falling action, then mga conclusion, and use that for your PE reflection paper. Or, if I'm not mistaken, the PE teachers will ask you usually to have or to answer a fitness test at the start of your PE class. And at the end of the PE class, or at the end of the year, or at the end of the semester, you will have another fitness test. And sometimes, uh, it's left at that. But what if your PE teacher or the PE teacher suddenly asks you, tell me your story, tell me your fitness story using rising action, conflict, climax, falling action, denoma, and conclusion, and tell me, why the results of your fitness test at the end of the semester is like that. We will find out a lot more about our students and what their realities are. We will find out many different ways of empathizing with them today because sometimes we forget that we were students too. And sometimes our students, because of this, will see that we care more and therefore will respond better to the teachers that do this. What if lang? The question is what? You can also use what we call the story spine by Ken Adams as a backstop, as a backbone. What if at the end of the year when you make, uh, when you ask your students to make their capstone project, you use the story spine as the basis? Okay. Of course, you will not start with once upon a time. Okay. But you can start with something that at the beginning of my journey in senior high school and because of all of my subjects or all of the subjects that I took from the start of senior high school to the end of senior high school, it helped me answer the problem, blah. And because I experienced this problem and I saw how this problem affected people, I used what I learned in uh, Malikhaing Pagsulat or I used uh, what I learned or the lessons that I learned from my teacher in, uh, in creative writing or I used earth science in answering it. What if 
your students reach that point. And when they face the panel, they can tell their journey in senior high school as a story. Why they solved this, why they found this as a problem, found the solution to this problem, and found out the results of how of how they so, try to solve the problem if it worked or didn't. Wouldn't that be a beautiful thing to see? If you're a panel member and looking at your students, actually telling you the story. I remember my class in this particular subject that you did not expect na yun pala yung dahilan kung bakit yun yung naisip niyang sagot sa katanungan na ganito. At nakahanap siya ng sagot dun sa problema na ganito ng isang komunidad dahil sa isang pinag-usapan niyo na random niyo na pag-usapan sa isang subject na hindi inaasakan. If you use the 5E uh, approach uh, by, by 5E, you can... Uh, you can use creative nonfiction um, to engage. For example, you can use works of imaginative science writing to make students and other readers become interested in science. Okay? You can also choose reading materials that are that is set that set the scene with detailed descriptions, okay, and engaging and using an engaging voice while giving factual information. Okay? So takwen po ang para pamamaraan pero katotohanan pa rin or truth pa rin yung sinasabi or konsepto pa rin. For example, uh, kung gagawing kwento okay, ang observation mo ng mitosis, let's say for example, nanonood ka ng cell na magdi-divide at ginawa, sinulat mo siya in technical writing, bullet points magagawa natin yan. Pero kung sinulat natin siya in creative non-fiction manner, or in a creative non-fiction style, we can also tell them to write it as a story. And when it's written as a story, or it's written as a poem, or it's written as a song, then it will be easier for the students to remember okay, uh, what are the things that will happen, or what things happen. Okay. Uh, the next one is explore. What if you ask a student to write a day-by-day diary of their favorite scientific experiment? In this case, the mongo bean. When you plant the mongo bean and it grows, what happens from day one to day to the day that you will harvest your mongo bean or your mongo sprout? Or will in 30 days the mongo sprout die? If that happened, how did they feel? Okay, write it down. Ask them to write it down. You can also ask them to write personal reflections on a particular subject, like. Uh, like when you ask them to cite everyday experiences as a lab. Ano ang kwento ng isang um, gripong hindi laging nasasara ng maayos? So pwede natin simulan yung kwento natin na tok, 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 tok. Okay. Tapos ang lalabas pala dun sa end ng kwento ay ito ay isang observation at kung gaano karaming tubig ang na-waste dahil lang hinayaan natin siya sa tok, tok. What if in the middle of the story, may nangyari at hindi na siya tok, 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 tok. Siya na ay tok, tok, tok na lang. At pagdating sa malapit sa dulo, siya ay tok, tok na lang. Matutuwa ba yung gripo o hindi? By looking at it that way, natutuwa ba yung gripo o matutuwa yung may-ari ng gripo? Ikwento natin, hayaan natin yung mga bata magkwento. You can also use creative nonfiction to explain. For instance, if you can read about the true life experience of a house fire survivor on how to escape a fire, we will find out that, uh, that when you are in a fire, it's not like how you uh, see it in the movies that everything is clear and that you see people panicking in their faces and stuff like that. No. Uh, when you are in a house fire, for example, or if, when it's a, it's a real dangerous fire, in thir- uh, the fire doubles in size every 30 seconds. So if it's a small fire like this, in 30 seconds it will double in size and that will double in size and that will double in size. And somewhere along the way, something will light up and make the smoke so black and so dark that once you close your eyes, you cannot open them. So, since that happened, uh, what, because we are we see 
uh, movies about it or documentaries about it, but reading a true to life experience of a house fire survivor okay, changes our paradigm, changes our viewpoint on how these things really happen. And if that's the case, how can we empathize with these people? How can we make sure that it does not happen? We can also explain the day in the life of a chosen occupation. If your students shadow someone or when, uh, follow someone around, let's say for example, they follow their, one of their parents around just to find out how they, or what they do for a living, okay? and then they write about their experience in first person. That's also a way of having them uh, stretch their metacognitive uh, elements. You can use it to elaborate by writing a letter to the uh, to the editor of a newspaper or your barangay captain or mayor about a particular viewpoint showing slice of life. For example, uh, if you have a dengue problem in your area, why not write to the barangay captain? Okay? You can choose this to be an actual letter to the barangay captain or to make it a writing exercise to hammer down the importance of uh, cleaning out your drainage or making sure that your drainage is not clogged or not throwing basura These are things that we can do to make sure that the students think about their action. What if, kaya hindi natin, uh, uh, well, we see mosquitoes as pests, yes, and because uh, dengue uh, is a real thing in the Philippines. But in Singapore, for example, they actually breed mosquitoes. And why do they breed And out? Why not try writing about it in poetic form? Because baka mamaya, when we realize that these mosquitoes have a purpose in the grand scheme of things, then it won't be a bigger problem. They still will be annoying, they still will be bite, and they will still produce itchy, uh, itchy things on our skin. But now we understand why they're doing that. And now we understand better uh, why we need to keep things clean. Also, uh, as a segue, honeybees uh, are very misunderstood insects. So, might as well ask your students to do something about it. Lastly, what if we ask them to evaluate? Ask them to write an article in the form of a persuasive essay, in a personal point of view. Ask them to write a recipe. Ask them to write a travel blog. Ask them to write something. Or, if, the, uh, if time does not permit that you ask them to write, then get examples uh, that can help you teach your lesson and have your experience read them. Now, I know some people will tell me, uh, Jay, ang dami mong pinapabasa sa mga studyante, ang dami mong pinapasulat. They don't have to be long. They just have to be long enough for you to be able to uh, help our, your students become more adept in, in making self-reflection. Because once they reach the point of self-reflection, they're already thinking about what they learned. They're thinking about their own learning. And they're now make, going to make, or they have more uh, ammunition for them to make better decisions. Uh, your kids, uh, for, for younger uh, students, we can ask them to write or to produce a picture book that shows a bi biography of a particular person. Or you can actually use, uh, why not you make a picture book of their own biography or of their autobiography. For instance, we can also make them uh, uh, make a children's book in which the water cycle is pre presented rhythmically or poetically. We can also mm -hmm. yeah, we can also ask the student the, okay, we can also ask them to write about how they came up with their capstone project okay, and which milestones they used in their senior high school life to reach the end of that. Okay. All right, so uh, that ends my uh, sharing. Alan, are you there? Yes, Jay. Yeah, is it time for us to answer some questions? Yes, we have uh, a few minutes to, to answer some questions. Okay. Uh, so, uh, since we have some time to ans uh, answer some questions, uh, this is the, to put your questions into the chat group or to our Zoom chat or to our Zoom group chat. Uh, and I'll do my best to answer the questions that 
appear on the chat. Okay. Uh, if there are no questions, uh, we can move to the next part. However, I do want to answer some questions if there are some questions that are posted. Okay. Um, in your first uh, menti, no, no, the first question was, ano, diba? Um, uh, no, the second question was, are you using creative, um, what is it, the nonfiction with non your students, right? And I answered, no, I don't. <laughs> Pero that was before... Uh, <laughs> For your talk, so I didn't know what it was, <laughs> and then now uh, I realized that, that that's what I've been asking my students to do all the time. <laughs> all the and, time, uh, parang write yeah. something in, in an interesting manner, diba? Well, not necessarily in an interesting manner, but I always tell them to use their experiences, to, mm, okay. to use the examples in their lives to illustrate uh, an idea, for example. And, and even the, now, sorry. I'm uh, sorry. Say, please continue. Because even now, when I remember, when I, I know, when you were talking, I was remembering that my lectures. Because I'm also teaching online, so all my lectures now are all written down. Whoever asked before, outline lang yun. Diba? <laughs> so now, yeah. So now I have to like uh, lecture to myself, para ma, so I could write it down as if I was lecturing to to people. And I realized that I was already doing it, pala. Na I was using my own experience. I was telling it in a cuento form rather than a theory theory listing down bullet points so ano na lang it's interesting na ano na to use the other narrative um, the narrative structures or theories to, to either deliver your lecture or to ask the students to deliver their papers actually it's very good asynchronous work like if you if you start the week, for example, with uh, a face-to-face -face meeting like this, uh, or if if uh, they are given a chance to have online classes, maybe one day you have online classes, and then for the rest of the week you have some activities, um, and you're just kept posted by a Google form, for example, or a Google Doc that you don't uh, you don't edit, you just see it, but they edit every day, and uh, it's easy actually. To look at Google if 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 you are in a place that allows that to happen, okay, uh, it's easy for you to look at Google and to see when they actually made the changes to the document, uh, how they edited it, and so forth and so on. Um, in the case of uh, places that do not have uh, or it's not as uh, hindi pa madali sa kanila yung online learning, okay, they can actually design modules that can be sent out as packets parang for respondents uh, learning and because it's uh, asynchronous because it's not face to face and because it's it's, a, it's also a way of dis distance learning um, it is a very good stand alone and then when it comes back um, it it harkens to the time that we still wrote our formal themes uh, in school because it's always experiential um Oh, when you mentioned that you are already using creative uh, nonfiction in your in your classes, and you said that um, no, it's not in a interesting way, the mere fact that you are asking them to write it from a particular perspective, or you're writing it already in a particular medium of delivery, it's already a far cry from a very very hyper technical text. I mean. I, I, I'm a science teacher. I like technical texts. They, they have their uses. We're going to want to communicate those ideas to the general public. Those with an aversion to science or those who don't like science, then it's one way of, uh, of making them more engaged uh, and allow them to make better decisions. You know, yung gusto natin eh. at the end of the day, you make better decisions because you reflected on what you did more. Um, well, the group chat isn't uh, moving, so I, I guess that people do not have questions. Uh, let's go to the last activity, Alan. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead. Okay. So, um, again, I would like to ask our participants to go to menti.com. Okay. And uh, I will stop sharing my screen right now to go to another screen. Okay. So, at this point, I will stop this. Okay and go to my uh, different presentation and ask you a different set of questions. Uh, 
So this will be my post webinar uh, presentation. Hopefully it works. There it does. Okay. And like that. So um, I will now share my screen. Sorry. There. Sharing my screen. There. Okay. So I'm sharing my screen right now. Uh, it is again www.menti.com and the code is 714079. 714079. Okay. Uh, there are three questions on that slide. Okay. And on that slide, just slide off uh, whether it is strongly disagree or strongly agree. Uh, one, I am considering the use of CNF to motivate my, to motivate my students to study their lessons in my subject. Uh, the second question is, I am considering the use of CNF to allow my students to make meaning of their lessons in my class. And the third one is, I am considering the use of CNF to evaluate my students' learning. Uh, so far, based on uh, how many participants, based on six participants, we are running at a 4.8. Okay. Uh, on a 4.7. I think this is a good sign, no, Alan? <laughs> that people are leading towards this one. So yeah. let's just allow this to happen uh, for a couple of minutes. Yes. Um, and uh, kindly let's, rem let's remind everyone uh, that at the end of this webinar, uh, that there's a survey that they will answer. I uh, guess we will send them an evaluation form. Uh, through their emails. Through their emails, yes. Uh, through their emails. And when they answer that one, uh, that will be uh, the basis also for their uh, certificates, uh, for their certificates yes. uh, that they will receive. Uh, please, uh, please uh, request for uh, ng organizers that when you send in your names, you send in your names correctly and the names of your schools also correct, so that it will not be a difficult uh, way of uh, answering. Uh, oh, sorry, of writing your certificates. Now, I understand if uh, some people still have hesitations uh, in using CNF or creative nonfiction in their class. That's okay. Uh, as long as you explore or as long as you ask your students to share uh, from their personal viewpoints, from their uh, personal stance, uh, for, for them to be able to actually form their uh, opinions based on what they see, uh, and it will become a very grounded decision, then you're already using the elements of creative nonfiction and the reasons why we use creative nonfiction in that. Okay, uh, let's uh, run this for one more minute. Would a good model be, ano? Because I was just uh, thinking about this. Would a good model for for creative nonfiction be, ano? Uh, Reader's Digest. Yes. So that's okay. usually factual and. They write very creatively and in a very accessible way, but a lot of information is also passed. Yes, actually, uh, those are some of the best examples of creative nonfiction. Uh, readers like this, unless it's listed as fiction already, because right, the readers right. as yeah. a fiction part of it. Um, and it's not the small one, it's not Laughter the Best Medicine, it's not all in the day's work. No, yeah, yeah. The, the, artic the main articles. articles. Yeah. yeah, they are good examples of creative nonfiction. Yun nga lang. Um, as the teacher, if you're going to use it, it's it's a beautiful way. Oh, it's always beautiful to read it first and to classify it first. Um, if it does follow the tenets of what a creative nonfiction work is, then by all means use it and claim it as creative nonfiction. Right. Because I was thinking, kung, kung, yeah, I was thinking of as a model, de ba? Parang format. Uh, as long as a word uses a literary form, like it can be a song, it can be in a, in a play, in a you know, uh, pero factual siya. Yes. Then it's creative nonfiction. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, we will end our sharing, uh, uh, sorry, we will end our uh, 
minty.com uh, gathering of answers and uh, currently based on the 54 respondents we have a 4.6 so it's very good i think i i am encouraged that a lot of people will use uh, this in the classroom as they plan their lessons for the new normal that we are facing okay uh, if there are no questions uh, i would pass the mic back to you alan and thank you for giving me this opportunity to share Yes, thank you very much, Jay. So I hope um, everyone um, learned something today, no? Using creative nonfiction writing, no? In not just your lessons, but also to encourage your students to also write their reports and even in their projects, no? In a in a more narrative form. Um, and I think this this new normal thing, no? The the online learning. I think it. It's an opportunity for everyone, teachers and students alike. Because uh, we're we're spending more time at home. We have more time, I guess, to ourselves to to let our creative juices run. No? So I think there are cases, because um, I've heard from my fellow teachers that nagiging mas creative daw yung bumabalik na projects na versus in an in classroom setting. Because outside the classroom, they're not pressured for time. Diba? They, yung, dahil asynchronous nga, they can spend either kung night night owl sila, they can, their creative juices are running more at night. So, nakakasubmit sila ng more interesting papers. And I think this is a good way for for the students to express themselves more and learn more. So, I hope we take advantage of this opportunity. So, um, thank you very much once again to Jay. Um, Jay, do you want to promote uh, your improv shows if there's an upcoming theater show or something? Uh, okay, wait. Um, wala naman. Like online. Wala. Like online, online improv ba? Um, <laughs> maybe, ano, if they if they want, they can um, follow me at uh, on Facebook at Fog Guy Art Space. And I usually post the shows there so that it's easier for, for us to share uh, different shows. Um, we do have a uh, uh, a live script reading. Uh, this is for ano, for relive your passion, ph. Um, I can share it on that on my personal Facebook uh, page. It's at bald guy art space. So just look for that. Uh, you'll bald see... guy art space. Yes, out at bald guy art space. I'm gonna type it right now uh, on the chat. Para ano, at about guy art space. Okay. Sige, we'll also be posting this uh, to our uh, Facebook page and um, our website. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that if it's uh, something artistic that uh, I'm doing, we can always uh, we can always share it through that uh, medium. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So thank you very much. It's it's uh, three fifty three now. So. I hope everyone enjoyed the webinar. Please um, don't forget to to answer our evaluation form so you can get your certificates. And we stream this live on Facebook and it will be uploaded there soon. And we will also post a copy of it on YouTube and post it at our website at brilliantcreationspublishing.com. So uh, again, please... Um, We'll keep you posted for our next webinar. Uh, thank you very much. Have a good weekend. Stay safe and wash your hands. Bye-bye.